Hey guys, what's up, how's it going? My name is Robin. Welcome back once again for another video on the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my monthly update of our Canadian based dividend growth stock portfolio on Wealth Simple Trade. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel. If you guys want to see all my stocks and my entire portfolio completely for free, check out the link in the description of today's video. You guys can download an app called Blossom Social where my portfolio is 100% free to access on there for you guys to check out if you guys want. So let's jump inside the portfolio and let's get things going. Hey guys, what's up, how's it going? Welcome to the portfolio update section of this video. So in this section of the video, I'll give you guys a quick little update on my main portfolio. We'll start off with uh, Wealth Simple. We'll go through these accounts and then I'll give you guys an update on our entire portfolio of all of our stocks and things like that since I haven't done a um, total portfolio update for a little while. So I'll give you guys an update on that. But the first accounts we're gonna talk about are gonna be my own personal accounts here um, on Wealth Simple Trade. So here's my dashboard as you guys can see. Uh, so you guys can can see everything in here. I like to be pretty transparent with this stuff because I think it's very helpful to show people all the steps along the way and to kind of show you guys how this whole process works. So we have $142,000 in total across all of our accounts since we first started investing. Uh, if you guys don't know, if you're brand new to the channel, I started roughly around 2019 or so is when I first started investing, as you guys can see here. And then it was about the early 2020 or so I really got super serious and I saved up as much money as I could. I got really frugal and that was basically where our portfolio grew the most. So we're up 53%, 53.13% all time. This is from the day I first started investing across all my accounts, all of my stocks. And then that's about $49,000 in total gain, which is pretty sweet. Uh, since the vast majority of that is in tax advantage accounts like the TFSA and whatnot. Uh, speaking of which, the TFSA is our biggest account here, $137,000 up about 35% all time. Next up we have is the first home savings account, which is the main account I'm building right now, uh, plus 3% all time. It's pretty small, only has about $800 in it um, as we just started this. And then we have an RRSB, which I built a little bit um, earlier this year as well as last year. And this is my second biggest account with about $4,000. So obviously these two accounts are pretty small. Uh, this was the big one, was the TFSA. My main focus was maxing that guy out as quickly as possible, and it obviously paid off. And now we're just kind of tidying up the first home savings account, the RSB account, and then all also a good chunk of my cash, my free cash I have now is going towards my fiance's, my partner's uh, TFSA because she has lots of room in there. So we basically repeat the whole process, but it's not necessarily a bad thing, uh, just something we do. Uh, we, you know, we got our work cut out for us kind of thing. Uh, but anyways, here's the return over the past little while. So the one day return, we're up 0.38% over the one day return for the TFSA. So today was a pretty good day in the markets. I think the Canadian markets are up a fair bit, which is why uh, it is Friday, um, 11.36 a.m. at the time of doing this video. Um, you guys will probably see this video sometime towards the weekend. Um, so who knows, things might change, but that's a quick little update of today. So things are going pretty good today. I also do have some cash available, so maybe we'll invest that later on. I uh, just noticed that right now. Uh, one week return is going to be about zero, so not too much happening inside of our portfolio, kind of ups and downs, kind of, we had a bit of a dip yesterday, it looks like, but we you know we're kind of going back up today, um, but pretty much trading a, a slightly above zero, I guess. Uh, one month return is 0.3, so the whole month has been pretty pretty good for our TFSA, actually, up about $5,000, and again, pretty steady rise throughout the month, nice little jump towards the middle and the end. Um, the three month return is about 4.78%. So just a little bit more than that. The past three months we've trending uh, positive gains inside the markets, most of that coming from Canadian stocks, but also a little bit of US markets too. But we are starting to see the Canadian markets kind of jump up a little bit, which I think is helping out a lot. And then the one year return is 21.96%. So that's just shy of 22% gain. That's about $24,000, just under $25,000 in total. So it's been a pretty good year over year. Um, this isn't year to date. This is not just. This is just, um, I guess it's May 24th at the time of doing this video. So that'd be May 24th, 2023 to May 24th, 2024. That's, that's how that works. One year, one whole year from today's date to the previous year. Um, is a 22% gain. And the markets last year were pretty good. Like we had a pretty good year, but you've seen like some pretty significant rise uh, towards the end of last year and going into the beginning of this year. And then come about April, we kind of like leveled off a little bit, but that's where that big gain come from. Being If you held your stocks in the market during this like little jump up here, you would have done well. And then all time return, 
we're looking at that 35%, which is about 35,000, just under $36,000. So once again, and, and guys, this isn't complicated stuff, pretty simple things. I just invest in pretty basic funds with some tiny little stocks I play around with, uh, which we'll actually talk about since I don't think I've dove into the stocks inside my TFSA for a little while. If you scroll down here, um, our biggest funds are going to be our ETFs, which is our market ETFs. And these are just simple, it's a really simple way of investing. It's nothing complicated. My style of investing is very fundamentally sound. It's very simple and I don't have to do a lot of stuff. You kind of do a little bit of work to figure it out, but once you've kind of figured it out and you're comfortable and you're educated, you kind of set it up and you just let it go. That's the, the main thing you've got to focus on is just putting the money into your portfolio. That's all you have to do at that point. So it's very easy to maintain. It's You can feel very good about it. You don't have to worry about it when markets go down or up. You can always feel good to just keep putting money in on a regular basis because it's very simple. It's, it's a tried and true method of doing things. So here's the big ETFs. Obviously our biggest ones are VFE, VDY. These are the biggest ones. Um, you can see the dollar amount here. So that's uh, the shares here. This right side gain is just going to be the stock growth. So it doesn't show the dividends. We'll talk about the dividends and stuff like that when we look at our entire portfolio review later on towards the end of the video, because that'll give you guys the total return. But here's some of our stocks. Once again, if you guys want to see all my stocks, everything, all my, all my portfolios, all my buys, all my trades, and kind of be pinged when I do them real time, if that's something you guys care about. There is a link to Blossom Social in the description of today's video. It's a cool little app where you guys can actually dive inside my portfolio, see all my stocks on there if you guys want to do a bit of a deeper dive. Now, I'll give you guys a quick little update of the distributions of our stocks since the beginning of the year. Now, this is just going to include my own portfolio. For some reason, my um, partner's portfolios, we have to resync to passive. So for right now, you're just seeing my accounts. I had to kind of reset a bunch of stuff. Um, so this is just the stocks with, with within my uh, portfolio. So that's going to be the main focus of today's video. Of course, like I said, towards the end of the video, I'll give you guys an update on our entire net worth so you guys can see everything. Uh, but for, for now, we're just going to be focusing on my accounts. Um, so we have average monthly dividends over the course of this year, about $424. So that's about four to $500 from my stocks. And you guys can see the different distributions here. If we hover over them, we made $584 for January. And once again, this is in TFSAs and RSBs mostly. Um, so it's all tax advantage accounts for the time being. So $584 in January, February $300, March about $441. April we have $435 and then May we got a total of $300 in terms of dividends. And you guys can see with the tickers here um, um, with the different amounts as well. And if we scroll down here, you can actually see the biggest stocks contributing to my dividend. So it, it makes sense that um, our ETFs, VDY, which is one of my bigger holdings, is going to have some of the most dividends, like 666. Ah, look at that. That's kind of funny. Uh, what are the odds of that? Uh, but VDY, um, number one, HYLD, uh, $638. Obviously, the higher yield ones are going to be some of the bigger ones up here. But again, depends on how much money you have inside them as well. But quick little overcap of our dividends. And then this year total, we made about $2,049. You, you guys can't see that because my webcam is probably blocking that. But about $2,000 I made total so far in dividends for this month. And just really quickly, I'll show you guys what it looks like in terms of our actual dividends from our stocks for the month of May. Just to give you a quick little recap on Wealth Simple Trade, just to give you guys uh, to be 100% transparent and whatnot. So Dollarama gave us a very small dividend inside of our RSB, about 53 cents. So a small dividend there. On May 7th, we got two dividends from HYLD as well as HDIV, our two uh, covered call ETFs. So HYLD, $134, and then HDIV, about $10. Uh, VDY on May 8th, giving us a dividend of $134 Canadian. And then FTN, giving us a dividend of about $10 on the 10th. And then we got some stock earnings, uh, a couple of cents here, so nothing major there. But those are the dividends we got so far for the month of May. I, I think we have a couple more coming up towards the end of the month. Uh, but May is one of the smaller months because a lot of our main ETFs and our main stocks that pay quarterly um, aren't paying out their dividends quite yet. All right, guys. So one thing I wanted to talk about really quickly that I haven't discussed uh, for quite a while is going to be the dividend growth rates of our stocks and ETFs that we hold. Now, as you guys know, um, I talk about dividends a lot in this channel and I love dividend investing, but the bulk of our return and my main focus is going to be growth. And if you look at the gains inside my portfolio, you know, at the start of the video, I talked about all that growth. A lot of that is coming from the growth of the stocks like the S&P 500 and some of our more growth focused stocks. But there is a combination of dividends in there as well. Um, you know, I like dividends. They've grown to be consistent. But again, our main focus is actually growth. And then as our portfolio grows, we can see those dividends really compound. And, you know, you guys can see that we're getting to the point where we're hitting about an average of 
about five to six hundred bucks a month in dividends. Uh, so it's it's really starting to get there. But of course, our portfolio is fairly large. You can obviously do things, focus more on dividend stocks, focus more on yields and income if you want to bump that up. But we're very much focused on growth because we're younger. And also, I see the value of growth. I like I think growth is important to consider in a portfolio, even if you are an income or dividend investor, because it gives you the best bang for your buck. And um, you probably want to have it in there to some degree, right? Like it makes sense to have you decide how much you want, uh, but it, it does make sense, I think. But nonetheless, here's uh, our the sheet. I'm going to explain this really quickly. Um, so here's the dividend growth rates. This is how much our dividends have grown inside our portfolio. So we have our stocks on the left side here. Um, here we have the tickers. Uh, as you guys can see here, tickers of individual stocks. And then going towards the bottom, we have the ETFs. I'll explain the ETFs um, in just a second. But the stocks here, we have the names. So Kushtart, ATD, right? Um, dividend yield. CNQ, Canadian National Resources, dividend yield. It's important to know the dividend yield because a higher yield um, will make more sense as you look at the increases because it's more impactful when you have a higher yield. A lower yield, bigger increases isn't as impactful. Nonetheless, it still creates a, a nice return. Um, on the bottom line of your stock over over a long period of time, right? Especially if you can capitalize them in the early phases of company growing their dividend yield. And you'll see that we have a nice mixture here. So Kushtard is a growth stock, um, less than 1% dividend yield. Um, here's the growth rates by year. So 2020, uh, the growth rate was 25%. So they raised their dividend by 25%. If you have whatever shares you ha had, whatever dividends you got, you just got a 25% growth. Pretty sweet, huh? In 2021, another 25% growth. 2022, 27% growth. And then 2023, 25% growth they just announced. And then here on the right side, we have the total. So I haven't held, held these stocks for all those years. Some stocks I have, some I haven't. Uh, and I haven't quite 100% filled the sheet out, like it's not 100% accurate. Um, I might have made a few mistakes here and there, so just keep that in mind. If you're curious about something, double check it because um, I just kind of put, the, put this together really quickly, so there might be some small mistakes in here. Um, like for example, in 2020, I don't know if Dollarama did a dividend increase or not, but I didn't own the stock, so I didn't put it in here, but they probably did, I'm not too sure. You'd have to double check that. But anyways, you can see the growth of ATD, so 100%. So over the course of four years, the dividends that I got from Kushtar originally, I, I've doubled them, right? 100% increase, pretty sweet. Same with CNQ, we have a dividend yield of 4.65%. Over the course of five years, 119% dividend growth. So once again, I didn't include the actual dollar amounts. Maybe that would have been a cool thing to include here, but you guys can see like every single year, you can feel a little bit good about your stocks growing those yields. CNR, once again, 2%. This is kind of like a mid-range stock, kind of in between growth and dividend growth. Uh, pretty steady increases, about a 47% increase. Dollarama has been really, really well the past couple years, about 81%, but Dollarama is by far the more growth-focused company here with pretty small yield of 0.28%. We can see the bank, TD, my favorite bank here, um, about 33.54% increase, but once again, they have one of the higher yields here. So a 6% increase of 5% is gonna be much higher than a 29% of 0.28%, so that's important to take note. Uh, Fortis has been pretty steady here, and then Telus we have at the bottom here, and Telus is you know having a pretty funny time right now if you guys have been watching uh, the telecommunications markets. But nonetheless, here's the dividend growth rates. Like I said, I like to kind of update this once a year. It's a pretty cool little thing to keep you guys uh, on track and to, to see the increases, because you might not notice them, but you can see the dollar amounts are increasing and your money is growing. Another way for your money to grow, you know, not just the money you put in, not just the growth, but uh, the dividends reinvested, but just those dividends growing on their own. Like getting raises every single year if you work a job, right? Um, but in this case, they're pretty darn good. <laughs> uh, they're much higher. Um, so VDY here is going to be the first ETF. Now for the ETFs here, um, it's hard to get increases for ETFs on a yearly basis. So I basically took the last five years and I averaged it out. So VDY over the past five years has an average growth rate about 6.42%. So I just put that in for every single year. It's hard with the ETFs because they're hard to track and stuff like that. So I just use the average. So VDY is a dividend focused ETF. It makes sense that it would have dividend growth. 32% growth. VFV, the S&P 500, very low dividend growth, but massive growth in terms of stock appreciation. 4% growth over the past five years, not a lot, but this um, this ETF has performed, has been my best performing ETF, so don't let, those, don't let that fool you. Remember, total return matters the most. HYLD, our first covered call ETF, um, had a decent year in 2022, had a really rough year in 2023, but kind of made up for it in 2024 so far, actually has a positive increase about 2%, and that's 11% yield. So that's a pretty high yield. Um, so it 
you know, things were kind of rocky in 2023. Uh, and actually, the total return for HYLD, as you guys will see later, has actually been not too bad for us because we've been buying during the dip. Um, so that's done pretty solid. And that's kind of the approach I'm going to take with that fund. HDIV is a much more safer, secure, more consistent um, ETF, 10% yield, but has actually had some pretty significant increases. And I was quite surprised about how much dividend growth that a covered call ETF that's structured this way um, has done. So it's, you know, if you want kind of like a traditional dividend ETF that's consistent and pretty, pretty solid, HDIV might be one for you guys to look at. Um, you know, 6% increase in 2022, 11% in 2023, and then 17% in 2024 for a covered call ETF, total dividend growth of 35%. So that's pretty cool. I was quite surprised with that. FTN is our split share fund, about 18% yield, uh, just under 18%. These don't typically increase their dividends. They just keep the same, uh, depending on when you buy in. I basically implore or I make a strategy that's similar to um, HYLD with FTN, where it's like I buy it during the dips, but when it's going up, I don't buy it because um, the the funds can kind of typically trend downwards, and with those high yields, you're getting a lot of lot of it from those dividends over time. So I try to focus on uh, basically buying those during the dips, and then I get the nice appreciation over time when it goes up, plus that dividend compound. So that's kind of the way that works. It's different than I would normally do with investing in stocks, and I don't re recommend it, but I find that's that's been very helpful with that. Then we have XCI, which is a small ETF that I hold that is about 26%. So cool little graph here. You guys can go uh, do it for yourself, but I find it very helpful as a dividend investor to just give you an, another source of motivation for your dividend stocks and the way your stocks will grow over time. And last but not least, guys, we're going to use a cool tool called Wealthica to show you guys the average across all of our accounts of all of our stocks. So this is a great tool that shows you your total return of all of your accounts all in one place. I really like this tool because it's one of the few tools that really shows your total return. There's not a lot of tools that will do that and we can put in all of our accounts. So this is our total net worth kind of added up together. You'll see at the start of the video, I just talked about my Wealthsimple uh, account, but this is all of our accounts added up together. Um, so we have about $179,000, just shy of $180,000 in total equities, that stocks. Um, so we're getting up there, guys. We My goal is to hit 200K by end of the year. Don't know if we're gonna hit that, we're gonna need definitely some help from the markets to hit that. Uh, if we are, um, it's doable, but probably not, especially with um, going towards the end of the year. I do have some expenses coming up. I do want to have some, I do have some, not major pur purchases, but some bigger purchases than normal coming up. Um, long story short, I'm basically going to be buying a vehicle. A vehicle. So we don't know how much it's going to cost, uh, but that's going to be factored in there too. So we're going to need a good year in the market to really hit that band of the year, but you never know. Maybe we'll hit 200K. That's our goal. Uh, we'll challenge ourselves, but of course, we don't know if it's going to happen. Just hitting 180 is a huge milestone for us. I'm super, super pumped for that. Uh, we have $138 in cash, um, but once again, markets could go up and down. So we're just kind of, we'll just keep focusing on the one thing we can control, which is putting money in and growing those accounts and doing what we do, because that's really at the end of the day, the only thing you really can control. So here's the stocks here. Um, like usual, if you guys have watched the previous videos, you'll see that over a long period of time, things like these, these numbers are always constantly changing. Uh, nothing is 100% for sure, but we have our tickers on the left side here. Uh, we have the book quantity here. I don't know if you guys can see this. Hopefully you guys can. Um, we have the all-time return here in a dollar amount, and then we have the actual percentage here of the total return, which includes stock growth, so stock appreciation, as well as the distributions. Um, so those dividends, how much, whatever we got from distributions, you'll see in the income tab here, this is the income plus this um, dollar amount here added up together, which gives you the all-time return. Um, so that's growth plus dividends. And again, biggest thing to focus on because if you don't include the dividends, you don't include the growth, you're missing out a big chunk of the big picture, right? And you'll see this with a lot of the income funds and income-based stocks. Um, so our best performing fund here is going to be, I think, VFV, um, especially in terms of a fund that I just buy on a regular basis. Some of these smaller stocks have kind of performed the same or performed somewhat as good, but to be 100% honest, we don't buy them on a regular basis. Um, my best performing stock is going to be Kushtar, and I have, I'd say I bought Kushtar on a regular basis, more or less. It's just been a very good performing stock, and it's still, even though Kushtar has dipped a little bit this year and had not as good of a year, um, it's still having an okay year because its previous years were just so good. Um, but um, nonetheless here, here's the returns of all our funds. So our biggest ones are our ETFs, so VFV, VDY are our biggest ones. HYLD, 25% return. I know a lot of people are probably surprised at that. Um, covered calls, 
can actually work. I'm not surprised. You just got to stick with it. And uh, again, you got to do it where it makes sense inside your portfolio. Um, TD up about 20, 20%. Obviously, the banks and some of the Canadian stocks haven't had, a, the Canadian stocks have had, they haven't had a good year for a little while, even though this year we're starting to see a bit of a change. So some of those stocks are going to be a little bit on the lower side, but we're, we're starting to see them kind of creep up a little bit. Um, uh, HDIV, um, about 16% gain. So once again, that's another covered call. FTN, about 16%. The FTN also is a, re a relatively new addition to my portfolio. I think I bought, I started it last year, so it's relatively new. Um, TELUS is kind of sitting about zero. Every single time I do an update, it's either up a little bit or it's down a little bit. It keeps going back and forth. I've bought tiny bits here and there but i'm not really too focused on it right now i might buy some here and there um, but it's an interesting stock right now and um, um i have to see your guys opinion on telus so you guys buying telus do you think it's not a good time to buy do you think interest rates are kind of making it risky i like to hear your guys comments on that uh, i'm not 100 percent sure on that one myself um, as why i'm kind of being a little bit careful with it um fortis is doing okay um say with xci doing okay and then we have cnq and dollarama towards the bottom here so once again uh, biggest thing, pay attention to the biggest holdings because these are the biggest ones with the biggest returns and these are the ones I bought into on a regular basis. So um, it's pretty impressive for them to be up. Uh, but nonetheless, just a quick little overview of all of our stocks, our holdings and the total value of all of our assets so you guys can see everything uh, basically added up together. So before we close uh, the video, I just want to do a quick little update on our living off our dividends case study. So this was a cool case study that we kind of did to kind of pretend to live off our dividends. And the idea here is to show us how dividend investing or growing your income can start to benefit your life. You don't have to wait till you're retired, quote unquote, or wait a long period of time to start to see the benefit you can from uh, literally the day you, st you first start investing. It's up to you to decide how you guys wanna do this. What we did is we're taking our dividends and we're kind of playing with them. We're creating some budgets. We're trying to be frugal. Um, we're not actually spending our dividend income here. We're just kind of playing around because of course we're reinvesting the money. Uh, me and my fiance, fiance we both work. Um, so we're good, pretty fine, doing pretty well financially right now. So we don't need our dividend income. There's no point spending if we don't need it. But we are kind of pretending with um, to play around with this because eventually at some point in time, the goal is to basically live off your dividends, right? It's to use your money, to use your income, to start to pay for things that you might want in life. So here's the spreadsheet here, pretty simple here. We have our one-time purchases here. These are things that we've been buying that we're gonna, with our quote unquote dividends, I'm gonna say in quotations. Um, so we have some movies here we've been buying. We have about $82 in movies. That's gonna seem like quite a bit for a lot of people, but I like to buy physical copies of movies because I like to be in control of them. I don't like to have to subscribe to uh, subscription services in order to watch movies and I, I don't like the idea that they could just disappear and then you don't have access to them I know personally in the past you might have had something that was digital and then it gets you know somebody decides to get rid of it oh no you can't watch this anymore and then all of a sudden it's gone so I like to have a physical copy of something that I can own myself and I can do whatever I want to do with it so that's why I buy DVDs CDs and all that kind of stuff because I like to be in control of that stuff um, so again $82 might seem like a lot but we did buy some movies and uh, we also bought a video game last month. We haven't bought anything too much in that category. But what we have done is for our monthly cost, we've added a few new things. So I made a, a budget for our movies. It's going to be about 25 bucks a month. So I bought three new movies for this month. Here they are. You guys can take a quick little peek at them. Um, I bought them. I usually buy my movies off Amazon. I sometimes will buy them used. Sometimes I'll buy them new. Uh, but that's an option for you guys. Um, but we spent about $20, give or take, for movies for this month. Um, our other big thing we added was our coffee and tea budget last month. That started off with $5. This month we bumped it up to $10. So I bought some new, uh, some different types of tea here. I bought some on sale. I bought one, um, one thing of tea, which was oolong tea. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's a nice little tea we've been trying there. And then I bought a, a box of loose leaf tea that was on sale at our store. Uh, the store uh, discounted it for two bucks. So I bought that there. And again, for this month, we bumped up our budget to $10. So next month we might bunch it up, bump it up to $15. But the cool thing about this is we're starting to kind of like um, stock up so we can start to kind of use our money in a more playful way. We can kind of like buy some better quality stuff. Or we can start to treat ourselves to better things. Uh, because now we're starting to build up, right? You buy one uh, small thing of tea for 100 bags and then you know a month goes by and you still have lots left over. So you can now take that money and spend it more on something fancier. So that's something we're gonna be doing uh, going into the future. So we're trying to kind of build that up. Uh, and the last thing we bought for this month was our groceries. We started a grocery budget. Um, so we went to the store, I bought groceries, and I basically, we did our regular monthly buy and then I just took $25 worth of stuff 
from a regular buy and here it is so you guys can see it here's the groceries that we bought for 25 bucks i thought 25 dollars was a nice little range something small and then every single month we're slowly add a little bit more but the goal with the 25 dollars to really get the best bang for your buck and it's hard because groceries are so expensive right now um, so these little things that kind of help us to focus um, on things and we can see the growth over time it, it helps us to stay focused and, it, and I, I like to think it's fun and it, it, it's frugal to be and it forces you to kind of stay within our budget uh, like me and my partner we're trying to kind of like stick to our budgets as much as possible and it's pretty fun it actually it actually is pretty fun so that's a quick little update on that I hope you guys enjoyed it I'm not too sure what I'm going to add for next month but we'll probably bump these up like we'll keep our movies budget the same because to be honest we haven't really even watched that many movies this month we've just been really busy uh, but our tea coffee budget we might bump up to 15 bucks we'll have to figure out where we want that to stick and then our grocery budget obviously we're going to bump up because groceries are so expensive uh, but that's going to be for next month's video all right guys that's it for today's video so i hope you guys enjoyed the video like i always mentioned if you guys enjoyed the video you guys can do me a solid by smashing the like button and if you guys want to see these updates or be notified of when i actually publish them be sure to subscribe to the channel take care guys hope you guys enjoy yourself um enjoy your month and whatnot hope you guys enjoying the nice weather it's starting to get kind of nice and warm and sunny here um, so that's been pretty sweet but anyways guys i'll see you guys next month take care have yourself a good day and i'll see you later